morning, commissioners, members of the public, and our grant applicants that are with us today, both for aviation education grants as well as airport grants. This meeting of the Oklahoma Aeronautics Commission is being conducted by video conference and teleconference. Six of the seven commissioners are attending remotely by video conference. The time is now 10 a.m. and the six commissioners are now participating in the meeting by video conference. The meeting will be monitored to ensure that each commissioner is audible to each other and the public. If any audio connection is lost or interrupted, the meeting will be stopped until the connection is restored. If the audio connection is not restore, restored within 30 minutes, the meeting will be deemed adjourned at the time the connection was lost and shall be reconvened at 1.30 p.m. today. If an audio connection cannot be restored at that time, the meeting shall be reconvened tomorrow, August 13th, 2020 at 10 a.m. If the audio connection is not restored at this time within 30 minutes, there will be another to reconvene the meeting at 1.30 p.m. on August the 13th. This pattern will repeat until an audio connection is reestablished. This meeting shall be electronically recorded. Documents and materials reviewed by or relied upon by the commissioners during this meeting are available at www.oac.ok.gov. They may be found in the upper right hand side of the home page. The notice as required by the Open Meeting Act has been filed and the agenda has been posted in compliance with the act. The meeting is being conducted in compliance with Senate Bill 661 passed during the 2020 legislative se session, which amended the Open Meeting Act to allow meetings by teleconference and video conference. Mr. Chairman, we are ready to begin. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the August Oklahoma Aeronautics Commission meeting. I need to let everyone know that we are in compliance with the uh, Open Meeting Act. The filing has been met, the uh, filing of the meeting notice has been done and the agenda has been posted publicly. And so next item is call to order and the uh, recording of members. Uh, Andrea. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right. First Congressional District Commissioner Kevin Potter. Here. Second Congressional District Commissioner David Conway. Fourth Congressional District Commissioner Lindy Ritz. Here. Fifth Congressional District Commissioner Dave Amos. Present. At large Commissioner Jim Putnam. At large Commissioner Jerry Hunter. Here. Thank you. We have a quorum. Mr. Yes. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I do want to reiterate that we do have apparently we're having some technical difficulties and uh, two of our commissioners are not on at the moment, but we do have a quorum so we can conduct business. Okay, very good. We can't just uh, have a motion for a full consent docket and just to prove everything and go home right now. We need to go through the agenda, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> If okay. I may interrupt, uh, can you hear me now? This is James Putnam. Yeah. Could you hear yeah. me before? No, we could not. Okay, I found out how to unmute my individual item here, so we're good. Okay, uh, item three, approval of the minutes. I need a motion. So moved. Second. 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 Okay. Uh, Andrea, call the roll, please. Commissioner Potter. Yes. Commissioner Conway. Yes. Commissioner Ritz. 
Yes. Commissioner, or excuse me, Chairman Amos. Yes. Commissioner Putnam. Yes. Commissioner Hunter. Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you. Item number four is the uh, new aviation program manager for the Oklahoma Aeronautics Commission. Mr. Director. Excuse me, just a moment. I seem to. All right, back, sorry, technical difficulty. Uh, yes, it's my pleasure to introduce to the commission our first aviation program manager, Thomas Galloway, uh, who started with us actually on June the 29th. He comes from, to us from Klamath Falls, Oregon, Oregon, where he's been in the airport business for some time. Uh, Thomas, if you could uh, hope your everything's working with you and you could uh, introduce yourself and say a few words. Sure. Hello. Uh, yes, as uh, Director Bird said, I'm Thomas Galloway. Uh, recently joined the commission here from Klamath Falls, Oregon. I'm uh, happy to be here in Oklahoma. Uh, so far, everybody's been great, and I look forward to working with everybody. We're glad to have Thomas, and uh, he's working with the uh, uh, Weather Center and Commissioner Ritz to bring some of the dew point from Oregon. Welcome aboard, Thomas. Item five is the new uh, Aviation Aerospace Education Program Coordinator. Yes, it's my pleasure uh, to introduce to the commission Paula Keaty, uh, who has come to the commission to take over the Aerospace and Aviation Education Program after a rather illustrious career in common education, I think 30 plus years with the Ada Public Schools, Ada School District, where she was one of the first in the country to implement the OPA high school curriculum, uh, nationally recognized and her program that she established there has been viewed as a model around the country. Paula, please introduce yourself and I'm sure you'd like to say a few words. You'll certainly get to say a few words through the remainder of the commission meeting as well. Thank you, Director, and thank you, Commissioners, for allowing me the opportunity to serve as your Aerospace Aviation Coordinator. I feel like I've had the unique opportunity to implement a program uh, in the Ada City Schools and learned how important it is for school districts, communities, airports, industry business leaders to work together to prepare our kids uh, with the skills they need to enter the workforce. And it's been an amazing experience and I am so thrilled to be able to come and speak uh, across the state and work with the grant programs as they implement this very important work. Great, well, welcome aboard. Thank you. Item six, Grayson is the uh, airport construction grant program. And I like the two words after that sentence. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Grace Nardi's Deputy Director for the Oklahoma Aeronautics Commission presenting item number six. Uh, as you indicated, Mr. Chairman, this is the Airport Construction Grant Program consent docket. Uh, today before you, you have several grants as well as a design approval. Uh, if any commissioner would request that any or all of these items be considered individually, uh, they are certainly welcome to do so. Uh, if not, I will uh, present the items, see if there's any questions after each item, and then there'll be uh, one vote taken at the end. Item, uh, item A is uh, a design approval for a project that is in the approved airport construction program. Uh, 
at the El Reno Regional Airport. Uh, project consists of constructing their new terminal building, which I know the airport manager and many of the local officials are very excited about. Uh, today with us, I believe we have the uh, someone that you should know, uh, Mr. Adam Fox. Uh, he's excited about his new job, but also about uh, moving into an opportunity to uh, upgrade his office and upgrade the uh, terminal building uh, for an airport there on the west side of town. The uh, total project, uh, total design costs will be a little over $139,000. Uh, and as, as we all know, terminal building projects are split 50-50. Uh, so that's where you see the share from the sponsor matching funds, as well as the state grant funds. Uh, Adam, uh, if you're on today, uh, you want to say a few words? Yes, sir. Can everyone hear me? Yes, I can. Perfect. Well, uh, just to piggyback on what Grayson said, uh, you know, we're, we're all definitely super excited, uh, to, um, uh, to, to have this opportunity for the airport. And, and I'm personally super excited to see you all again. It seems like it's been forever. And uh, as Grayson said, you know, in the new role, uh, definitely have missed all you guys um, with the commission. Um, so a little bit about this terminal building, um, you know, El Reno uh, is kind of like a blank canvas uh, as far as the airport goes. Uh, we, we really didn't have a, a center point for the airport out here. <laughs> building will serve as that center point uh, for for businesses that are already here future expansion um, you know this is very important um, this building will serve as the front door of El Reno and as as you all know um, Oklahoma City is, is definitely expanding you know we have the three-lane highway coming to El Reno for a reason that's because we're kind of next on the list for for that uh that big expansion you know uh, yukon uh, kind of exploded a couple years back as you all know and i really believe that el reno is next and so already having this asset in place will be vital for the success of this airport and i greatly uh would appreciate um you guys uh, being a part of this and helping us out to, to get this building thank you adam appreciate that uh, for everybody, as you can see on the, uh, the screen, the PowerPoint, uh, just a couple of uh, early preliminary layouts of, of where the terminal building could go and, and what it could look like. Uh, so we're, we're excited, obviously, as our terminal buildings are the centerpieces of airports, we're always excited to see those go up. So uh, if there's any questions, I'll stand. Grayson, is this, uh, does this come out of the half a million dollars or is this in addition to? This comes out of the half a million dollars, Mr. Chairman. Okay. okay, that's what I thought. All right. All right, uh, next slide, please. Item B is a uh, project that is in the air approved airport construction program at Cordell Municipal Airport. Uh, you'll see uh, three projects on here uh, today at smaller airports in Western Oklahoma. Uh, there's several, several things going on that you've heard us present before. Uh, the unclassified airports are getting $300,000 of NPE funding, kind of a special one-time allotment from, uh, from the FAA, thanks to Congress's passing of the 2018 FAA bill. Uh, we had three of these projects already in the airport construction program for $225,000 or $250,000 or even $300,000 in Thankfully, uh, the NPE funding came along and was able to reduce the state share down very significantly. Uh, today, before you, you have a project at Cordell, which uh, involves repairing the runway pavement, cracks steel seal coat, putting in new LED pappies, uh, and, and doing the flight inspection for that, uh, as well as uh, rotating beacon and other electrical equipment like the home run. Uh, based on the bids, project cost is uh, about $374,000. Paid for lion's share by that $300,000 of, of FAA grant fund, $299,999. Uh, state grant share will be $38,702. Uh, and then the sponsor matching fund, sponsors making the 10% the contribution to the FAA and then a 5% match to the, to the state grant. Uh, if we can move to the next slide, you can see here kind of uh, the general idea of what is going on in, in a little aerial view of the airport. <laughs> Uh, staff recommends approval for this project, but I'll stand for any questions. And uh, I don't know if we have uh, is JC uh, Moser on the uh, line today. Yes, I'm here. 
JC, Grayson. I don't know if you want to say say any remarks. We can hear you. Yeah, Grayson, I, I'm on the commission. I'm very uh, happy to visit with you today. I hope you can hear me. Okay. Uh, our, we're just a very small airport, and we're out in western Oklahoma. We're vital to our area because we bring uh, some air traffic into the western part of Oklahoma, even though we do have a, a big, huge airport on, on to the west of us. But our little airport here has roughly seven uh, planes that we keep out there, which of course keeps us underneath the amount that the FAA will, will help with on the, the regular funds that they used to give. And we're just thankful for the Oklahoma Aeronautics uh, Commission for even considering this project and for willing to help us out to try to keep what we've already built out here and, and keep it up in good shape. And we sure do appreciate you. Thank you very much. Thank you, JC. Uh, seeing, uh, seeing no questions, uh, we can move on to the next slide. Item C uh, is a project at the Fountainhead Lodge Air Park. This is also part of the special non-primary entitlement funds uh, that, that Congress has appropriated to smaller airports. Uh, you'll remember from previous conversations, we have three state park airports uh, that are under the purview of the OAC. Uh, we decided one of those airports that the uh, $300,000 was just not even worth taking. Uh, the pavement was in bad enough shape. There was low enough activity. It really, the, the pavement was beyond repair. It'd be like trying to put a Band-Aid on a broken leg. Uh, Fountainhead Lodge and, and Carlton Landing, formerly Arrowhead Airport, uh, we believed were worthy of taking the money uh, and using it because their payments were in decent enough shape and that it would be a worthwhile investment of the public funds. So before you today is is the uh, project at Fountainhead Lodge Airport. This is basically just a simple crack seal and seal coat of the airport pavements. Uh, based on bid, total cost of that's about $212,000. Uh, obviously this will be a 90-10 project, 90% 90 coming from the FAA and that federal grant we were talking about. Uh, and 10% coming from the OAC to, to make the match $21,201 and some change. Uh, if we can go to the next page, next slide, uh, you can see this is the uh, the airport. Um, it is uh, out there at the uh, Fountainhead uh, Park on Lake Eufaula in eastern Oklahoma, uh, right adjacent to the golf course, just like several of the others are around the state. Um, I will stand for any questions, but staff recommends approval for this project. And Fountainhead's off of Highway 150 over there, isn't it? Uh, I actually do not know which highway it is off the top of my head there, Mr. Chairman, but uh, yeah. that sounds accurate. I always get these two mixed up, but uh, very good. Uh, seeing no questions, we can move on to the uh, next item, item D. Uh, this is a project at the uh, Miami Regional Airport. Uh, in Northeast Oklahoma, this is a, a project in the approved airport construction program. Uh, total cost is a little over $675,000. We'll be funded mostly with the airport's available non-primary entitlement federal grant funds, a little over $450,000. This is one that we're able to transfer some expiring NPE money to, so we're, we're grateful for that, uh, which reduced the state share down some. Uh, state cost is a little over $212,000, as you can see there on the agenda item. Uh, and then the sponsor matching funds are 11208 uh, Fortunately, the sponsor is not having to make any federal match uh, or any match to the federal grant because of the CARES Act. And so that match you see there, the reason it's so low is they're just having to match the OAC grant 5%. So uh, staff recommends approval. And uh, you can see the project here is, is basically repair of the pavements. Uh, OAC money is going to go towards the right-hand side picture, mostly the green, that's the runway. The, uh, the FAA funding will go towards the red and the blue on the left-hand side. That's mostly the parallel taxiway system. Uh, I'll stand for any questions, but, but staff recommends approval for this project. And seeing no questions, we can move on to the next slide. Item E uh, is a project at the uh, Christman Airfield in Okeem in Northwest Oklahoma. Uh, this project consists of crack seal and seal coat on the runway, connecting taxiway to apron pavements. Uh, based on the bid, the total project cost is uh, $360,000. We funded mostly with that special one-time 
FAA non-primary entitlement funds of two hundred ninety-nine nine 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 thousand. Uh, state grant funds, we're just kind of making up the difference there, $25,000, a little over, as you can see on the agenda item, and then local match of about uh, $34,000. Uh, again, this is a project that we had in the ACP previously for about $225,000, so we're, we're definitely getting a, uh, a, the good end of the deal here by only having to contribute just a little bit to uh, fully fund this particular project. Uh, staff recommends approval. If we go to the next slide, you can see the top-down view. Uh, and this is uh, everything that's going on there at the airport. Uh, they have a, a pretty active ag spraying uh, operator there at the midfield on the east side of the airport. Uh, and then they have a, a T-hanger unit up on the uh, northeast corner that they have several aircraft uh, that are based there as well. I will uh, stand for any questions on this project, but staff does recommend approval. Seeing no questions, we can move on to the Next item, item F, this is a uh, project in the approved airport construction program at the Mid-America Industrial Airport in Fryer, Oklahoma. Uh, this is a uh, project that was originally uh, involved with some because the FAA money is not requiring uh, any of our OAC match uh, like we normally do for discretionary projects at the 5%. We help the sponsor out with half their local match. Uh, thankfully, for what Congress did that uh, alleviates the need for us to have to make that match. So uh, don't, don't have to do that in this particular case. We are though, we were committed to uh, doing a piece of the project and that piece was rehabbing the existing taxiway uh, as well as installing taxiway lights on the existing taxiway and rehabbing the existing apron. The, the primary discretionary project, primary piece of the discretionary project was extending the taxiway to get it a full parallel. If we go to the next slide, you can see the top-down view. Purple and blue is, is kind of the area that we were working on. And if you look there, the uh, A just south of the purple, uh, that's the new extension of the parallel taxiway giving the airport a full parallel. Right now, they do not have that full parallel. That pavement's not in place. Uh, and so this airport, it's uh, it's an up-and-coming airport. Uh, I think Google uses it. That's it's a a pretty big important uh, operator out there at the Mid-America Industrial Park, and I'm, I'm sure they're poised for future expansions as well. I know the industrial park is growing and, and getting bigger, and so this is, a, this is a great little gem of an airport in northeast Oklahoma, uh, as well as a, a great economic development tool for the uh, industrial park in general. Uh, so staff uh, is recommending approval for this project. Total cost is uh, just over $490,000. This will be a 95-5 project. Uh, commission coming up with about 466000 and the local share of 5% match at a little over $24,000. Uh, this has been a long project in the making, uh, but I know the airport's excited to uh, see the project. Unfortunately, they weren't able to join us this morning. They were actually in one of those economic development meetings trying to recruit some new business, so we know how important that is to them. But uh, staff recommends approval, and I'll, I'll stand for any questions, commissioners. All right, move on to the uh, next slide. Uh, last item uh, on this consent uh, docket is item G uh, for a project in the approved airport construction program at the Wainoka Municipal Airport in Northwest Oklahoma. Uh, again, this is one of those projects we previously were going to do with just state money, but uh, thankfully the FAA was able to come up with uh, the NPE money for these particular smaller airports. Uh, and OAC is just gonna try and make up the difference uh, to, to get a good project out here. This is, uh, uh, fortunately, an airport that uh, is able to use its money and then with this extra state grant funds, if the commission would so allow, uh, we're going to be able to do about an inch, inch and a half overlay on the existing pavement out there. They're more than just a crack seal and a seal coat. Um, it, it is due. Uh, it needs that overlay. Uh, it, it, it's definitely, uh, I won't say it's beyond its surface life, but it's definitely getting close to the end of its surface life. So it's, it's time for something more than just a crack seal and a seal coat. Uh, if we go to the next slide, you can take the aerial view of the airport there. Um, as you can see, that basically just overlay of the runway, the existing, going to be a pretty simple, basic project. Uh, they do have uh, several hangars there on the northwest side of the airport. And, and they do, they, they, the city has actually done some pretty good things uh, for the airport. Uh, they have a little courtesy car. They do have a little terminal building out there that they've, they have uh, Sue 
the chair of the airport board with us today. Sue, do you want to uh, say a few words about the airport? And yeah, maybe Sue is, uh, maybe she's not with us today. Anyways, uh, staff uh, recommends approval and I'll, I'll stand for any questions. Okay. Motion to approve. Um, Andrea, call the vote for the consent docket, please. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you need a motion in a second. Oh, that's I, right. I'm, right. I made the motion. Kevin Potter. Okay. Uh, Jim Putnam seconds. Okay. Right, now call now the roll, please. Now I'll call the vote. Commissioner Potter. Yes. Commissioner Conway. Yes. Commissioner Ritz. Yes. Chairman Amos. Yes. Commissioner Putnam. Aye. Commissioner Hunter. Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you, Andrea. Item seven is our uh, education grant program. And uh, Paula, if you would uh, take the microphone and take care of this. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, today we bring to, to you 38 different grants. Um, I know you may sometimes wonder, are we getting our money's worth? Are we getting bang for our buck? And I can assure you that, that you are. Last Saturday morning, I received a call from the United States Air Force Academy and the young man said, Miss Keedy, I can't talk, but for just a second, but I wanted to tell you I was named flight team leader over 24 cadets and I want to thank you for allowing me to be part of an aviation pathway. And then he closed by saying, I know there are lots of people I need to thank and he's exactly right, not the least of which is the Oklahoma Aeronautics Commission who four years ago granted uh, the City School Dr District enough funds to begin a pre-kindergarten through 12th grade program that has changed the way we viewed STEM edu education has changed the community and the uh, Ada Regional Airport. So I think that this year we have the power to do that again with these 38 grants that we're bringing before you that will touch thousands of lives. I told the director Bird the other day that I was really excited about the balance of the grants. We have grants anywhere from pre-kindergarten awareness programs all the way up to the young adults were serving to try to uh, correct uh, skill gaps and get them ready for the workforce. So rest assured, we work diligently. Uh, we followed the rules that have been set forth as we, we chose the, the grants. Also wanna to bring to your attention that we're aware that COVID-19 may impact uh, the implementation of some of these grants. And we will certainly take this into consideration as, as we and as I work with each of these grantees uh, and we'll keep you apprised of any possible changes due to COVID-19 within the implementation process. So again, I thank you for this important uh, opportunity. I count it a privilege to work with you. I believe Grayson is going to introduce our first uh, recommendation. But thank you, Paula. Yes, uh, I'll, I'll present item A, uh, just for the, for the good of the order, uh, commissioners. I think you know Paula is, was the uh, assistant superintendent for ADA, uh, and, and given that we are considering a grant for ADA, uh, for the good of the order and, and, and for appearances, I just wanted to uh, present that item to you. Uh, I believe today we have with us uh, Mr. Mike Anderson, who's the superintendent for ADA City Schools to uh, present their program uh, and, and say a few words. Uh, Mike, if, if you're on, take it away. Mike, if, if you're on, I, we can't hear you. Well. Not showing you. Not now. Cor Corby. <laughs> Okay, Mike, we can hear you now. Okay, good. Uh, we've had some <coughs> audio issues, but uh, I just want to say thank you to the commission for giving us the opportunity to be here to uh, 
talk about our program that we're very proud of. I think the slide uh, says an awful lot that we touch every student in our district from pre-K through 12th grade, from everything for uh, from A is for airplane to now a uh, fourth year capstone class uh, led by AOPA curriculum and our own instructor, uh, Mr. Eckler, who is also working uh, on his uh, pilot's license as well, along with our students. We've got eight students currently in flight training. Uh, these are uh, made available because of partnerships uh, throughout our community and partnerships with the commission. Um, very proud of some alumni that have just recently left us. Uh, Paula mentioned a young man uh, who's pictured there in the photo with Congressman Cole in the background. Uh, he was just finished his basic training Monday and was uh, moved to cadet status at the Air Force Academy. Uh, we have another young man at Southeastern Oklahoma State University who was the first person in his freshman class this year to uh, solo and to gain his pilot's license. And then another young man uh, at the University of Oklahoma who completed his freshman year with a perfect four point uh, oh, grade point average in aerospace engineering. And there's no question in my mind that our program gave them a leg up on all of their competitors and uh, fellow classmates. But we couldn't be more proud to be a part of this and uh, certainly uh, appreciate your consideration for this grant. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate that presentation. As you can see here on the slide, uh, they're doing some good things in ADA. Um, you go to the agenda item. As you can see here, the agenda item, the, the requested amount uh, for the ADA grant was 33,000 with over $33,000. Uh, staff is recommending $25,000 for this particular program. Uh, staff does recommend approval. And I will, I'll stand for any questions. I think Mike will stand for any questions. This is Commissioner Seeing Button. None. Do you have a four-year high school curriculum in place now, or are you still working with AOPA? Uh, we are in year four now. We were uh, the first uh, high school in Oklahoma to uh, field test the AOPA's curriculum. Uh, so now we are in year four, and uh, that class led by Mr. Eckler will be a capstone uh, class for our aviation students who have been in this program all along. Very proud of it. That's exciting. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you. I might mention one other thing. The young lady that was in the picture, I think this is something that you guys need to hear. Uh, I know she looked like she was 12, but she soloed this summer and um, she doesn't even have her driver's license. Uh, so <laughs> when she wanted to get to grandma's house, she flew out there and, and uh, just driving. So we're, we're very nice. proud of that. Uh, a lot of good things. Women in aviation is a big part of this program as well. Terrific. All right, if uh, we don't have any more questions, I will turn it back to Paula for the uh, item B and the rest of the program, Mr. Chairman and commissioners, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Grayson. Uh, the next program we recommend is Alva High School's Aeronautics and Technology Program and rec uh, representing Alva High School is Ryan Brandt. All right, yeah, this is Ryan, and uh, thank you all for the opportunity. It, it certainly means a lot to us. This is gonna be our second year uh, offering this program at Alba High School, and it is a combination of aeronautics and technology uh, just to show the STEM opportunities to our students. And a lot of students out here in Northwest Oklahoma, small town, uh, they don't realize what opportunities there are in aviation. So we try to give them a, a broad overview just to show them the career opportunities for them and pay skills. So uh, through the aeronautics part of the curriculum, we cover things like history of flight. And that is really just to show them how quickly aviation has progressed technologically over the years. Uh, we also get into drones, and uh, last year they actually built the drones out of kits. Uh, we did some flying, and we also prep them for the uh, remote pilot certificate for the test if they choose to go take that, that test to become certified commercial drone pilots. Uh, we also get into principles of flight to give them a little bit of the science behind flight. We talk about meteorology. Uh, last year we actually had a meteorologist come and talk to the students via uh, Skype. It was after COVID hit and we had to restrict visitors. 
Uh, but we also have them do things like build models as well. We do the balsa wood models. That way they can actually get into building the structures of the aircraft and see things like wing spars and the ribs and the stringers and everything that goes into aircraft construction. Uh, map reading, we get into aviation charts in addition to topographical maps that they might encounter in other technological fields. Uh, aircraft accident investigation along with uh, forensics and show the scientific methods used in investigating aircraft accidents. And also we have them do a career research project in aviation, just to look at all the various careers that are available. And especially here in Oklahoma, a lot of people don't realize what is available for them in the state and we're trying to, to help with that. Uh, one of the things we were able to do last year, we don't think we'll be able to do it this year because of COVID. We're just going to have to keep an eye on it and, and adjust accordingly. But we were able to take a field trip to Tulsa Community College, uh, their air traffic control training facility and their um, their flight training facility. So the students really enjoyed that. If uh, the virus allows, we will try to do another trip sometime this year to another college or airport to see the operations there. Okay. Thank you, Ryan. The uh, requested amount for Alva High School was 3,458. Uh, staff recommendation is $2,500. And I'm sure that Ryan would stand for any questions. Okay, seeing none, the third program we recommend uh, is Atoka, Atoka Elementary Schools, Atoka Takes Flight Part Two. And representing Atoka is Geraldine Southern. Good morning. Thank you for this opportunity. We're so excited to be able to partner with you guys to continue with our STEM education. The focus that our school is to promote aviation program at our high school and middle school. And and we also get to partner with our community, with our career tech, some local colleges uh, and, and the district schools to reach all of our students. Thank you. Uh, the requested amount for Atoka Elementary is $2,691.25. The staff recommendation is for $2,000. And I am sure Geraldine would stand for questions. Seeing none, uh, the next uh, grant recommendation is for Bishop John Carroll Cathedral School for Eagle Electives and representing Bishop John Carroll is Jennifer Herndon. Hi, thank you for this opportunity. The Eagle Elective Program today is actually day one of year two of this program. We started school this morning, fingers crossed. Um, and the, this program really allows our kids to choose their interest whether it be through our STEM, we call it STREAM program, which includes religion and English, or I'm religion and engineering as well, um, or a coding class, we have physics class, we have science Olympiad. And so the focus of, of theirs is the um, building of, of flight plans and using drones to implement them along with the coding classes. And so we really are focusing on sending our kids on to that next level having had some knowledge and then being able to take that and apply it in their next academic career level. So um, we appreciate your support and are excited to be a part of the program. Thank you. The requested amount for Bishop John Carroll is 1,107.45. The staff, staff recommendation is 1,100, which will stand for any questions. Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, next up for grant recommendation is the Boys and Girls Club of Oklahoma County for their program, Unidentified Flying Objective and Pre-Flight Program. Representing Boys and Girls Club of Oklahoma County is Tracy Michalecki. Yes, thank you. Um, thank you to the commission for the opportunity to present our program to you today. Um, we've had a unidentified flying opportunity drone program for two years now, and it's focused on the high schools at Oklahoma City Public Schools. Um, and some of our high school members have attended the OU Sooner Flight Academy. They're enrolled in engineering programs at OU and OSU. 
And um, we also have a member that's attending the United States Air Force Academy, and he's studying aerospace engineering with hopes to becoming a pilot. So we're very proud of all of our members that have graduated from that program. And so this year we wanna focus on middle school and expanding our program to expose them to new drone and other aeronautics and STEM related activities. Um, and our program for the middle school is called the pre-flight program and it will serve fifth through eighth grade members. And the curriculum will focus on fun physics activities, flight safety and regulations, as well as flight skills. Um, so we wanna use the funds to purchase enough supplies to give each member the opportunity to have their own drone to fly as well as their own physics supplies. So we don't have to share those due to COVID. Um, normally we would be taking this program into our OKCPS partner schools. However, they're, being, they're virtual for the first nine weeks. So we have six sites that we've opened to serve uh, middle school members. And so we will be taking this program into those sites and it's all around Oklahoma City. We have a couple on the south side of Oklahoma City. Um, our main site is Memorial Park, which is in the heart of Oklahoma City. And then we're opening an east side as well as Midwest City. Um, so we're really trying to take this program into the schools, but since we can't, we're gonna open it, open more sites so the members can come to us. Um, it will benefit up to 180 middle school members and the program will be offered starting in September, at least once a week at each site and will run through December. And then depending on if the schools go back into session in, in January, we'll be going back into the schools. And if not, we'll run the program again in the spring. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you very much. You. Um, the requested amount for the grant for Boys and Girls Club is uh, the requested amount was $65,000. Staff recommendation is $15,000. Tracy, I'm sure we'll stand for any questions. Hearing none, uh, the next grant recommendation is for Cameron University for their Aerospace Engineering and Applied Mathematics Summer Academy. Representing Cameron is Ann Nolly. Yes. Uh, my academy is uh, not virtual. We weren't able to do it this summer. This is our, well, this next year, if we are funded and are able to conduct the academy, will be our ninth year. But uh, I only applied for funding last year through the Aerospace Commission, and uh, we received funding, but we're not able to use it because this is a residential academy. It's for middle school girls. It's designed to teach... Uh, aerospace engineering principles and applied mathematics and to try to encourage young women to go into STEM education, especially. And um, I, I got worried when they stopped the astronaut program because I thought a lot of girls entered uh, STEM because of the astronaut program. So we uh, created this program. They learn a lot of mathematics over the week and they go to Oklahoma City, to Frontier City to do uh, physics of amusement parks and they visit the science museum they build uh, model rockets airplanes and uh, launch them and uh, actually since it's only eight years old we're we're young enough these girls start out in sixth grade so i have two girls i know already who have their uh, license to fly and two who are majoring in aerospace engineering so we're uh, young we hope we have uh, a better year next year in terms of COVID-19 and that we're able to have our uh, residential academies here at Cameron. It's really a, a fun activity and, and I see lots of changes in young girls and we can then we follow up in the fall with programs for sixth grade students and these, six, these aerospace academy students come back and help with it. So they come back and help the sixth graders build rockets. Right. Thank you, Ann. The amount requested for this program is $5,471. The staff recommends $1,500. And I'm sure she'll stand for any questions. Hearing none, the next grant request is for Class Matters STEAM 405. Uh, representing Class Matters is uh, Darren Lamkin. 
Hello, uh, thank you all again for the opportunity. It's great to put a uh, face with the name. And I just want to talk about the organization. Uh, being a small organization, you don't really get this opportunity. So it's just an honor. And so what we do is we work with the youth specifically in Oklahoma City Public School District in the Northeast and Northwest side. And we work with the underperforming students and the underrepresented students exposing them to um, STEM, well STEAM rather, science, technology, engineering, aviation, math slash medicine. And so what we're doing with STEM, uh, STEAM 405 is going virtual before COVID happened. And what we're doing right now is we're sending supplies to students and building engineering and aviation related products. So for instance, one student made a uh, water bottle aircraft and another uh, made a bomber using Legos. And so, uh, so just promoting STEM with household items and recyclables. And this grant opportunity will allow us to impact more students and also send more supplies so we can build more projects. So that's what we're doing. Thank you so much, Darren. I never heard it with uh, STEAM or STREAM put that way. That's exciting. The amount requested for Class Matters is $7,681. The staff recommendation is for $2,700. And I'm sure Darren would stand for questions. Hearing none, the next grant program to be recommended is Davenport High School's Flight School Program. And representing uh, Davenport High School is Danny Acord. Uh, yes, thank you very much for uh, allowing me to speak on the behalf of our program today. Uh, we started our program last year with the uh, AOPA and we, we started with our freshman class this year. That's going to move up. and We're going to have freshmen and sophomores. Um, we're really excited because during uh, spring break, we were able to acquire a Redbird FMX flight simulator. Uh, the bad side of that was it's uh, still running Windows XP from 2010 or so. And uh, so it needs to be updated because it has a, a, a tendency to crash. And then it, not literally, uh, but the uh, program crashes. But uh, basically, we did not get to use it with our students last year because we weren't able to come back due to the COVID. And so the kids are so, so excited this year because uh, they're able to actually have this in our class. And uh, this year I'm team teaching that. And then we also hope to bring in a, a certified flight instructor from time to time so that our kids get uh, some real time flying as well as the classwork. And so we're really uh, excited about what we have to offer our young small school, so. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you very much, Danny. The amount requested for Davenport High School uh, is $13,262.99. Staff recommendation is $8,000. And I'm sure Mr. Acord would stand for questions. Mr. Acorn, how many students does this serve? Right now, we have uh, 29 in there. Uh, but this is like I say, a second year, we're capping it at 20 per class. And so we have uh, a total of 29 students in the two classes right now. And that's, that's a pretty large percent since seeing how we only have 100 kids in our entire high school. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, the next recommendation is for Dove Science Academy's uh, high School Aviation Lab, and representing Dove is Uziyer Savici. Yes, ma'am. Hi, everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for giving this opportunity to me. Um, my name is Uziyer Savici. I am working at Dove Science Academy High School. I would like to give a brief information about Dove schools. We are a small district with big dreams. Um, we honored to host First Lady two years ago in our elementary campus and here we host uh, U.S. Uh, Education Secretary from uh, Mr. Brogan. Um, our journey in aviation started two years ago. We got grant 
and we have started our aviation STEM aviation club. I'm currently inside this club. Uh, this is for after school uh, club for the middle school students, and we would like to continue. We would like to open a new aviation lab for our high school students, so we can prepare our students in aviation fields. We are college prep schools, and we, as an Oklahoma, we would like to prepare our students in aviation field. So we are so excited. We would like to um, continue this opportunity as a curriculum uh, based. So we will start with the aviation club, then we will make it as a curriculum. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Savici. The amount requested for Dove Science Academy High School is $19,900. Staff recommends $6,650 and will stand for any questions. Hearing none, the next uh, applicant was El Reno Regional Airport for its par program RQO, Aviation and Awareness Discovery Camp. And representing El Reno Regional Airport is Adam Fox. Chairman, commissioners, thank you again for this opportunity. Um, so a little bit about our program. This is a two-day uh, summer camp uh, for uh, 2021, obviously. Uh, this is a camp for middle school age students. I plan to partner with the El Reno Public Schools uh, to, uh, to, to spread the uh, awareness of our camp to get some of those students out here to the airport to kind of close the gap so that they understand uh, what aviation is all about. Uh, so, so day one, what I plan to do is uh, it's going to be a day full of hands-on activities. So we're going to basically take the students through, um, you know, different uh, aspects of the industry. So anything from avionics, AMP uh, uh, maintenance, uh, the engineering aspects of an airport. So basically, why is the asphalt or the concrete as deep as it is? Why is this, uh, this wide? What's What's the, the taxiway doing so far away from the runway? You know, different aspects of that. So they can basically have, uh, um, uh, going into high school, have some knowledge uh, of, of, you know, different uh, uh, careers in aviation. Uh, we're going to vol uh, have volunteers from uh, Sooner Flight Academy. I plan to also get uh, volunteers from Canadian Valley Career Tech. I've also spoke with them. They have the great a &P program out there. Get some of those uh, guys and gals out here to kind of, uh, market uh, that program as well because uh, you know we need so many AMP mechanics in the state of, uh, of Oklahoma it seems like every uh, company is, is screaming that same message you know we need those AMP mechanics day two I plan to uh, partner with EA chapter 24 out of Sundance and we're going to do young eagles uh, the intro flights uh, with those uh, wonderful volunteers out there this camp is uh, obviously the first annual, so that means that as we progress, I plan to expand this. That means not just uh, middle school age, but maybe we'll back it down. Maybe we have something for the, uh, the high school age students as well, because my plan is to get everybody in the community involved with the airport, uh, you know, for, for all aspects. But in aviation education, I hope that they're the next uh, in, the, uh, in the queue to start teaching the AOPA uh, aviation curriculum. And with that being said, I think that's a perfect opportunity to have more than uh, just the uh, 20 students come out to the airport um, next summer. So thank you. Thank you, Adam. The requested amount for El Reno Regional Airport is $2,300. Staff, staff recommends $2,300 and we'll stand for any questions. Hearing none, the next program uh, is for Inspiration and Recognition of Science and Technology, which is FIRST Robotics. Uh, representing FIRST is Melinda Taylor. Good morning. Uh, thank you guys for allowing us to uh, visit with you. And, to, and uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about our program. We work with over a, a little over 800 high school students. Uh, we get them ready as close to the real world engineering as we can. Uh, the kids learn how to uh, des design a brand a team, uh, design and build robots. Uh, they learn different kinds of skills on, uh, 
you know, how to present themselves, how to present, how to work with other people. They compete against other teams, but then on top of that, they also go out and work with uh, engineers already and get the feeling of it. Um, and that's about it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Melinda. The amount requested is $7,500. Staff recommends $7,500 for FIRST Robotics and we'll stand for any questions. Hearing none, uh, the next grant request was from Girl Scouts of Eastern Oklahoma for Pathfinder Space Camp and representing Girl Scouts is Melissa Goforth. Yes, hi, thank you so much for having me today and get to explain our um, program that we're really excited about. Um, most people don't realize that Girl Scouts are more than just cookies. And that's the first thing you think of when you hear our name. Um, but with Girl Scouts of Eastern Oklahoma, we serve over 30 counties. We have over 10,000 girls. And in that, um, STEM is a really big part of what we offer to our girls. And we started to notice that a lot of girls start to lose interest in STEM in about the sixth grade. And so we don't wanna see that happen. We wanna see that excitement continue to grow. So we're hoping by offering the Pathfinder um, experience for the girls, this will be the Pathfinder Space Camp in Huntsville, Alabama. And this is going to be an introduction um, for the girls. So for all the space camp opportunities. So it's the introduction to space camp, the aviation challenge camp and the space robotics camp as well. Um, and we'll offer it for 20 girls and four adults to attain, to go to this three day, two night program. So we're hoping really with this next summer and um, it'll really get the girls excited to do um, more STEM activities with us. And thank you. Thank you, Melissa. The amount requested for Girl Scouts of Eastern Oklahoma is $5,115.50. Staff is recommending $2,500. And we'll stand for any questions. Hearing none, the next applicant is Gordon Cooper Technology Center and its STEM and Aerospace Summer Camp. And rep representing Gordon Cooper is Kelly Wilson. Good morning, can you hear me? Yes. Great. Um, we are looking forward to integrating aviation more into our existing STEM camps. We've done STEM camps for almost 10 years. And uh, I just want to say thank you very much for this grant. We hope to uh, do at least part of our STEM camp on our aviation campus here at Gordon Cooper. And we look to uh, just incorporate it. We've already partnered with Tinker and Northrop Grumman and some other aerospace companies just to bring STEM to our um, neighboring schools. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, the requested amount for Gordon Cooper is uh, $5,000. Staff is recommending $3,000 and we'll stand for any questions. Hearing none, the next applicant is Grand Aces Aviation Ground School Program and representing Grand Aces is Lorraine Butters. Good morning, can you hear me? Yes. Great. Uh, yes, I'm Lorraine Butters. I'm the uh, Vice President of Grand Aces Foundation. We're a fairly new nonprofit organization in Northeast Oklahoma. We service six um, counties in Northeast Oklahoma. And our founder um, decided two years ago that he wanted to create this uh, nonprofit to give back to the local community up here. He's um, a retired Air Force Colonel that uh, retired. Uh, he flew the F-16 for 27 years and retired as the commander of the Air National Guard. Um, sorry, our, our foundation provides scholarships for young people in Northeast Oklahoma to get their private pilot. Positions. We pay 100% of the cost for that. And the first two students just um, their, their pilot license this last Monday, which was amazing, a great, great experience. Uh, our great request is for assistance with our ground school program, and, um, and uh, we'll pay about 25% of ground school for six students. And uh, we know that our program doesn't uh, impact 
as many students as some of the other uh, organizations, but the impact we do have on these kids is absolutely life changing. Um, and we just, we appreciate the opportunity this morning and uh, we're happy to answer your questions. Thank you, Lorraine. The requested amount for Grand ACES Aviation is 3,525. Staff is recommending 1,750 and we'll answer any questions. Thank you, hearing none, we'll move to Get Guthrie Edmond Regional Airport and representing Guthrie Edmond for their GOK educational events is Shellen Stanley. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, commissioners, and all, all you others. Uh, the Guthrie Edmond Regional Airport Summer Program challenges 20 students ages eight through 13 to learn the principles of flight using science and mathematics. It's also an opportunity to engage in hands-on activity. This will be our fourth year coming up. Every year we team up with Sooner Flight Academy and the EAA Young Eagles, and usually pick a couple of days in June or July on a Friday and Saturday. We'll have educational hands-on activities on Friday, and then the EAA Young Eagles come on Saturday to offer free rides to all the kids who participated in the program. So while those kids are waiting for their rides on Saturday, we also have the commemorative Air Force who is restoring an A-26 that opens up their hangar and allows these kids to crawl through their A-26. So it kind of, uh, they get a bang for their buck, if you will. Our summer aviation program will include four forces of flight, building paper airplanes, styrogliders, among it, but it's not limited to just those things. We kind of switch it up every year because we have repeating students. They'll be learning parts of the airplane and what those parts do to control the aircraft. They build and launch rockets and learn how the four forces of flight will affect the direction of flight on both the airplane and the rocket. The students also explore Newton's laws of motions and Bernoulli's principle as they relate to the flight and learn the phonetic alphabet, of course, and how it relates to the world of aviation and the importance of communication. The program will also allow for the opportunity to plant some career seeds for those aspiring young people to consider a future job in aviation and aerospace. Mr. Chairman, commissioners, we really appreciate your consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Stanley. The amount requested is $1,300 for Guthrie Edmond Regional. Uh, the staff recommendation is $1,150. We'll stand for any questions. Hearing none, the next grant program recommended is KISS, Institute for Practical Robotics and their Botball and Junior Botball Challenge. Uh, representing KISS is Steve Goodgame. Um, good morning. So I would like to thank everybody for uh, coming in virtually. I know it's, 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 it's a new thing, right? It's really crazy. I think everybody's pretty familiar with our programs. We got through just in the nick of time last spring. We actually had our big event at the fairgrounds, close to 5,000 people in attendance. Adam Fox was there uh, from OAC with the astronaut suit and was a huge hit. Um, and then after that, COVID hit, so everything shut down. Um, one thing I wanted to show you is I wanted to show you impact because we do a lot of inspiring, right? We do lots of inspiring. We're going to inspire kids to do all this, but I wanted to show you the true impact you're having, especially with our junior volleyball program. It's majority female. And I also want you to look at the ethnicity, why I put that on there. It's also majority underrepresented kids. So what, with your support, what we're doing is we're impacting thousands and thousands of kids in Oklahoma at an early age, a lot of kids who would nev never have this opportunity and we're showing them programming and robotics and ties to aviation. So this thing is having a lot of, a lot of legs and a lot of research done on it. Uh, we've got a PhD dissertation out of Middell that showed significant improvement in girls' math skills. Fourth grade girls moved up a year and a half in their math performance. So this is what we need in STEM. We need kids who are better prepared uh, to take these courses and to know the math and how to do it. And then one last thing I want to talk about the aerial program. 
we've got an autonomous aerial program that's extremely solid. We spent the last uh, four months working on this. We've got full AI running, uh, TensorFlow, all these things. This will be a high school type curriculum with autonomous drones. We ran a summer camp with the James Grimsley and Dr. Huck and the Choctaw Nation. We were actually gonna present this at South by Southwest in Austin uh, with the FAA. So coming out of Oklahoma with this drone program and then COVID hit. So um, I don't have anything to show you here, but you guys are gonna see a lot of autonomous drone action coming out of us this year. Thank you so much, Steve. Uh, <laughs> the recommendation for the KISS Institute for Practical Robotics is $10,500. The staff recommendation is for $7,500 and we'll stand for any questions. Hearing none, the next grant recommendation is McAllister High School for its aerospace and engineering class. Representing McAllister is Brett Lolly. Good morning. Um, as Ms. Keedy said, my name is Brett Lolly. I represent McAllister Public Schools. Um, I just want to apologize up front. Um, my team and I are doing a Google Classroom training in a district here in Oklahoma. So if you see here something in the background, that's them. Um, I want to talk to for just a minute about our program. Um, this year, we're in uh, year two of the AOPA curriculum. Um, this year, we currently have 32 students enrolled, but um, with everything going on, our schedules are kind of all over the place. So that could very easily increase up to 40 or 50 really quickly. Um, this past year, we were excited to do a couple of things. I noticed that you can't really read it on my slide. I promise it looked better when I made it, but um, just to kind of go over a couple of things on there. Um, we had representatives from the American Airlines Cadet Pilot Program come in and do a presentation to our students about creating a bridge program to their cadet pilot program. Um, we traveled to the Oklahoma Aerospace Career Fair at Tulsa Tech last year with about 30 to 35 students to get them to see what careers were out there and what um, things were required to be um, to participate in different careers and start getting their minds focused for a career in aviation. Um, and we also had the opportunity to present our program at the Eastern Oklahoma State College uh, College and Career Fair, where we were able to reach 30, uh, 3,000 to 3,500 students in southeastern Oklahoma um, in an attempt to tell them, hey, aerospace for the aviation industry is a, an active industry and we would love for you to be a part of it. Um, this year, we are offering uh, year one and year two of the AOPA curriculum. Um, in addition to the curriculum, we are adding the PCS Adventures Rubik's Cube Drone Program to the year one curriculum where students can learn how to safely um, create and fly a drone. Um, and then we're also adding with the funding um, that we're getting in addition to our uh, supplies to run the class or some of our supplies to run the class, we're adding the Glime Virtual Cockpit Curriculum to our year two program. So um, to, to add to the richness of that curriculum, um, we want to give our kids a little bit more experience, a little bit more hands-on with actual um, aviation-related um, things. Not that the curriculum is bad and doesn't do that in any way, but we want to provide a more robust offering. In addition to that, um, our goals this year are to try to make a partnership with the McAllister Airport here in town um, and try to um, get our students up for um, some flights as, as much as the obviously the COVID restrictions will allow us to. Um, we are also starting this year an aviation slash robotics after school program at our middle school. Um, as of right now, we're thinking that if they allow us to do that, which it's looking like they will, um, we could have as many as 50 to 60 students involved in that. And so getting to do some hands on activities um, with them for robotics and aviation. And um, this year and, and next year, we're really trying to promote this program. This past year, we've really promoted um, our, our computer science program. And this is kind of a part of that because I am the chairman of the computer science department at McAllister. Um, and so this year we increased our, our number of students enrolled in robotics from about 15 to about 50. And this coming year, we're really gonna push the aerospace engineering program and try to get the number of students involved uh, in that class up as well. And um, the kind of long-term goal, in addition to creating as many opportunities as we can, again, with the COVID restrictions to have field trips and, and different things to go explore different career options. One thing we really want to do is we really want to create a simulator lab. And so we're gonna, we have a small simulator, we're gonna buy a bigger sim simulator this year, and then um, we're gonna continue to try to create that so our kids can have those opportunities to fly and log those hours um, in a flight simulator and get as real of an opportunity as we can afford as a school. Um, and an and opportunity for them to practice all of the things that they're actually learning in the AOPA curriculum um, and, and not just hear it, but actually go experience it and what all of the, the dials and the knobs and the buttons and the throttles and the rudders and, and flaps and all of those things, what they actually do to the plane. And so a, a more robust experience there. 
Um, Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Nope, I'm finished. Thank you. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Thank you, Brett. Um, the amount requested for McAllister Public Schools is $5,792.28. Staff recommendation is for $5,000, and we'll stand for any questions. Hearing none, uh, the next grant recommendation is from Metro Tech Centers and the FAA Mike Monroney Aeronautical Center for their ACE Camp program representing uh, Metro Tech is Michael Branch. Good morning. I want to thank you all for the opportunity to present to you this morning. Um, with the exception of this year, our campus has hosted an aviation career exploration camp uh, in conjunction with the Mike Mon Monroney Aeronautical Center to expose seventh and eighth graders to the different career fields in aviation. Uh, so one week camp, we do two one week camps um, to, for middle school students. We, they go through uh, quite a bit in that week. Um, they'll start with hands-on activities here on campus. They come in, uh, the news, all the local news channels bring in the helicopters for a fly-in and the students get to kind of look around and see what uh, goes on inside of those um, vehicles. They also get the opportunity to taxi aircraft while they're here. Um, some of the hands-on activities include bending, cutting and riveting sheet metal. We also uh, inflate a hot air balloon because that's another aspect of aerospace that most people don't talk about. They go on a number of field trips. One is to the FAA. They visit the, the crash scene investigation uh, lab that they have over there and learn a little bit about the forensics of uh, diagnosing a, a aircraft crash. Uh, they also go to the local airport, which is Will, Will Rogers and they tour the control tower. Uh, it's, it's quite a bit packed into it. It's pretty much all aviation or aer aerospace related. And we have actually started seeing the benefits of the camp because several of the students have enrolled in our aviation maintenance program. Excellent. Thank you, Brian. Uh, I'm, excuse, excuse me, Michael. The amount re requested for our Metro Tech Center is 24,475. Staff recommendation is 13,250 and we'll stand for any questions. Yeah, this is a, a Commissioner Platinum. I've got a question. Doesn't the ACE camp get supported by the uh, Young Eagles program out of uh, and Sundance? Yes, uh, the Saturday after the camp, the campers have the opportunity to go out to the Hinton airport and take the experimental flights with EAA and Young Eagles. Each one takes one, one of the camps. Okay, that's what I thought. Thank you much. Thank you, Michael. You're welcome. The next program uh, to be recommended is Metro Tech STEM Mobile Lab, and rep representing the Metro Tech STEM Mobile Lab is Brian Lever. Thank you. Can you guys hear me? Yes. All right. Thank you uh, for this opportunity to present. Uh, thank you for your consideration of this, of this award. So <clears throat> the Metro STEM Lab, Mobile Lab, is a, a new endeavor for us. Obviously, during the COVID time that we're all experiencing, this is, is going to be a great challenge for us with schools shut down. But the goal here is to bring the digital divide to our urban students. Our, uh, the bus will host uh, flight simulators. Uh, computers for coding, as well as the opportunity to do some 3D printing um, in this mobile lab. So our goal is to visit our middle schools, our high schools, and to use the bus for special events to inspire our uh, new uh, leaders and students in STEM and aviation careers. So um, that's really about it. I really appreciate it. And we look forward to uh, continuing to improve our mobile bus that we've already purchased. Thank you. The grant request for Metro Tech Mobile Lab is 22,568.85. The staff recommendation is for $10,000 and we'll stand for any questions. Hearing none, the next grant request is from Middale Technology Center for their aircraft structures and heavy maintenance uh, grant. 
And representing Middell is Amy Harden. Good morning, I appreciate your time. Um, just to tell you a little bit about our program, um, it's a 900 hour full-time program course here at uh, Middell Tech Center. Um, our program's a little bit different than the part 147 AMP programs. Um, we follow the same general curriculum, but we are not an FAA um, certified center. And so we cover the general curriculum, get into the electrical with a specific focus on the electrical sheet metal and composite materials. Um, our students kind of fill that gap um, in between the A&P and an unskilled worker for our MROs such as Tinker and AAR. So our students have an understanding of the uh, basic terms and skills needed, uh, familiarization with an aircraft, but they're not a fully certified A&P mechanic. Um, this grant is going to allow us, uh, this is my first year here as the assistant director over that program. Um, this grant is going to allow us to purchase four different trainers um, that will allow us to teach our students the specific skills that are being taught as far as aircraft electrical wiring, um, you know, termination, soldering, all that kind of stuff. And so they're going to be able to practice those troubleshooting skills as well on these. Um, it's really going to help us while many of our students are employed as sheet metal mechanics. Um, um, this exposure to aircraft cabling is going to better prepare our students for the dangers and care that must be taken when they're working around electrical wiring. It's also going to allow um, industry partners who hire our students to utilize them in more than just the sheet metal area. So they could be moved into um, introductory electrical positions as well. So um, we really appreciate appreciate the opportunity that the OAC is providing us. Um, your partnership's really invaluable to what we do um, to help aircraft maintenance in Oklahoma. So thank you. Thank you so much, Amy. The grant request for Middell Technology was 7,110. Staff recommendation is for $4,000 and we'll stand for any questions. Hearing none, uh, the next grant request was from Mustang High School's Flight Lab and representing Mustang High School is Christy Self. Good morning. Thank you so much for considering Mustang's application for three of the virtual cockpit flight simulators. Mustang is a growing school um, at the high school. Our enrollment this year is gonna be about 3,600 kids. This is our second year to implement the AOPA program and uh, this year, I'm going to have two of the first year classes. Each of those will have about 25 students. And then I'm also going to have a second year class as well that has about 20 students. So this year alone, this will be impacting, you know, around 65 students. As a private pilot, I understand the importance of students being able to practice the skills that we're talking about in class and being able to do it in an affordable and fun way you know, being able to see what happens in an in-flight emergency, you know, when you're actually in the airplane instead of just talking about it in class is so important. Um, and, you know, this is gonna have long lasting effects. In the next 10 years, this would easily impact, you know, around a thousand students. So again, just thank you for considering the application. Thank you, Christy. For Mustang High School's Flight Lab, the amount requested is 5,475. The staff recommendation is for $5,000. Stand for any questions. Hearing none, the next program to be recommended is the Newspaper and Education Institute's Soaring Oklahoma Aerospace and Defense Program. And representing Newspaper and Education is Bailey Huntsman. Good morning. Um, I just wanna say thank you all for um, giving us this opportunity once again this year to be considered for the um, Oklahoma Aeronautics Commission grant. We have been working on the Soaring Oklahoma program since 2015. And um, in the last year we did um, reach over 159,000 students in the state of Oklahoma. Something unique about our program is that we are able to reach across the whole entire state. Um, we did publish we publish eight lesson plans in the Oklahoman, as well as insert the student um, poster into the Oklahoman. Um, something unique about what we do as well is that all of our um, publications are available digitally for um, teachers and students to access across the state, um, which we all know is really important right now with COVID um, 
as many schools are doing things virtually and we don't know what things will look like um, come December when we publish this program. So we do have that ability to um, go digital if we need to, um, but we will also do the print portion um, no matter what. So um, I think that's all I had, um, but thank you guys and I appreciate your consideration. Thank you, Ms. Huntsman. For the Newspaper and Education Institute, the amount recommended is $5,000. Uh, requested was $5,000. The staff recommendation is for $5,000. We'll stand for any questions. Thank you. The next applicant is Oilton Public Schools. Uh, Dr. Matt Posey, the superintendent, called me this morning and said they had some COVID-related staff uh, issues at Oilton High School and asked me just to express to you his excitement. They are requesting funds for what they call the OHS Drone Adventure Program, which is an elective course that students actually enroll in and they're working on their part 107, their basics uh, uh, for UAS systems and uh, flight simulation and really excited for year two, year one and year two. And I think that I would mention how difficult it is for a public schools right now in this economic uh, climate to offer coursework when really they only have the teaching staff for most of the core cor courses that they normally offer. So to step out and have a drone elective or to offer the AOPA curriculum is, is really, really important to our state. And I'm really proud of the schools that have, have been able to do that. Oilton Public Schools uh, requested amount was $3,000. The staff recommendation is for $3,000. And I'll answer any questions if I may. Thank you. The next grant uh, to bring forth is the Oklahoma Career Tech Foundation's Oklahoma Education and Industry Partnership that you probably know as OEIP. Representing Oklahoma Career Tech is Gina Hubbard. She has she been on and is she has not okay i'll be glad to speak for oeip i'm sure most of you have heard of oeip and the commission has supported it in years past uh it's obviously a an education and industry partnership where over 300 teachers during the summer uh, are able to attend workshops that allow them to see what they're teaching in the classroom is actually necessary to business and industry. And it brings together the skill and the industry. It's a remarkable program that allows our teachers then to go back and modify and to look to see and to know what jobs, uh, particularly aerospace, uh, and aviation jobs are in their region that they can talk to their students about. So OEIP, uh, I believe there were four sites last year and they had to uh, have virtual uh, workshops. They're hopeful, of, of course, that this year they will be able again to have uh, in-person industry education partnership workshops. The request for uh, Oklahoma Career Tech Foundation was $10,000 and the staff recommend $10,000. And I'll stand for any questions. Okay, next is Oklahoma Engineering Foundation for its OEF Engineering Fair. Representing OEF is Adrian Graham. Hi, good morning. It's so good to see everyone's faces. Um, so the OEF, 2021 program season is going to look a little bit different this year. Our Math Counts program has um, is a national program, so it all of our regional competitions are going strictly online. Um, but we have decided that we will continue to make this as normal as possible. 
So we are go we're still ordering trophies for all of our regional competitions and competitors. We're still providing the t-shirts that everyone looks forward to. We're really fortunate that American Fidelity allows us to um, use their design and creative team to um, create the designs of our t-shirts. So we still will be printing t-shirts. One of the great things about being able, about this program being online, about the Math Counts program being online, if there is something um, that's good, is that we are actually allowed to expand school participation um, by five students. So instead of just 10 students per school, we can now have 15. So we will be able to expand the number of students in our Math Counts program. The engineering fair at this moment in time is still scheduled in February during engineers week. Um, and it's still currently planned to be in person. We will continue to monitor how things go throughout the school year. All of our competition hosts, we are working on um, creating some alternatives if we think that being if we can't, we know that we can't socially distant in our in our space, but since we do have the engineering fair at the Science Museum Oklahoma, we are working with the Science Museum to find ways on how we can spread it out and maybe space it out throughout the day. So instead of everyone coming at once, we may be able to to spread school participation throughout the day. So. Um, we're moving forward as planned and we really appreciate the support of the Aeronautics Commission because of this grant. We have partnered with the FAA to provide a drone obstacle course as well as last year the FAA brought in just a fun activity for the students. And we're working with um, OSU and Stillwater to help with that drone competition as well. So because of this grant opportunity, we've really been able to expand into more of an aerospace the or at least an aerospace competition at the engineering fair so i appreciate your time and your consideration thank you adrian the amount requested for oef is ten thousand dollars staff recommends five thousand dollars we'll stand for any questions the next grant is oklahoma school of science and mathematics foundation for its middle school summer school math and science workshop expansion representing uh, OSSM is Bill Kuehl. Hi, good morning. Um, I apologize that I am looking a little bit casual today, but uh, I don't know if you can see me here or not. But um, we are, for those that don't know, Oklahoma School of Science and Mathematics is one of the elite STEM schools in the country. And our goal is, is to reach out to all the counties in Oklahoma and represent uh, STEM education. And so today I'm actually down in Plainview right now and I had to find a place where I could get some kind of internet connection so that I could talk to you all. But our, our goal right now is, um, is to let students know about science and mathematics and get them excited about that. And that's exactly what our middle school programs are all about. Uh, this year we were going to take those out uh, during spring break out to the various uh, communities creating uh, essentially hubs where students could come in and, and partake of, of the activities that we normally do uh, on campus as a way to reach out to them and, and to make these things available. Um, COVID happened after spring break and so we ended up going online which uh, we started our school year two weeks early this year and our students are online at least until the COVID numbers go down but with that said, our plan right now is to work with students in middle schools across Oklahoma uh, and do it over the, uh, the holiday break, the, the winter holiday break for most students. And if we have to go with a virtual program, that right now is our plan. And so we truly wanna make sure students get excited about it. Uh, we do offer two one week um, summer camps and we do get students that, uh, about half of them are on scholarship uh, from all over Oklahoma that quite honestly can't afford to go to a summer camp. And our focus is on STEM education. So uh, I thank you all for obviously your consideration today. And uh, uh, for me, I, I'm very passionate about helping these kids uh, of all ages learn about science and mathematics 
And many of those students that we've we've uh, taught in our classrooms are working for places like Boeing and, and other aeronautics type uh, organizations today. So it's it's something where you know we're looking for the benefits of the work that we're we're putting in, and we certainly want to benefit all of Oklahoma. So thank you so much, and uh, I apologize that Ms. Flack we couldn't be here today to uh, to talk to you on the call, but she actually has a uh, foundation board meeting that she could not be away from because it's her meeting. So thank you, Bill, very much. So Oklahoma School of Science and Mathematics, the requested amount was $2,500. Staff recommendation is $1,500. We'll stand for any questions. Hearing none, the next grant is Oklahoma Science and Engineering Foundation. Representing the Oklahoma Science and Engineering Foundation is uh, Mr. Scott Taylor. Morning. I'd uh, like to thank for thank everyone at the commission for continued support. Uh, the Oklahoma Science and Engineering Foundation is the mechanism that deploys first Lego League programs across the state. Uh, we, are, we are a program that uses the Lego Mindstorms platform as uh, the tool to track the kids and for them to exercise the, the lessons that they learn in the classroom. Uh, there's also a project that's a, a, a good portion of the, the work that they do where they have to identify a problem and, uh, and uh, a real world problem and come up with a innovative solution for that problem. Uh, we have uh, continuously experienced over the past 12 years, uh, anywhere from, depending upon the year, anywhere from 20 to 10% growth. And uh, last year was, was a, another growth year for us. And uh, we'll see what this year brings for us in, in all of this. We are currently working on a remote platform so that our competitions can take place from in, in a remote format, uh, not virtual because they're actually going to build robots. They just won't, they may not be in the same place. If we can meet for competitions, we will. Um, we've, uh, we've had a lot of success with these kids and uh, they've, they, they cross a lot of platforms. So. Uh, again, we uh, thank you for your support. Thank you, Scott. The amount requested for First Lego League is five thousand uh, dollars. Staff recommendation five thousand dollars. We'll stand for any questions. Thank you. The next request is from Oklahoma State University for its Speed Fest program, representing OSU, uh, Dr. Andrew Arena. Good morning. Speed Fest is. Uh, unique program in the country, really. And it's a multi-class design competition that focuses on um, aircraft design, aircraft engineering. Um, we have a collegiate class that's called the Alpha class, where the students will design and build and compete with jet-powered uh, composite aircraft, designing them, building them from scratch, including all the tooling. And a high school class, called the India class where students build uh, from kits and we've developed a curriculum to go along with that. And uh, uh, we'll fly the airplanes, usually four in a heat at the same time. And, uh, and it's, it's great excitement for the students. And here you, here you can see in a picture um, some of the different aircraft that have been developed by the students over the years. The, uh, on the right, there's a couple of Alpha class airplanes, one of which you see a, an airplane during a race dropping an autonomous rover that uh, was also developed by the students. And after the airplane race, the rover had to race. Um, lower left-hand corner, there's uh, basically 220 mile an hour composite uh, paintball bombers. Airplanes pulled about 60 Gs. So the you can see they, they really stress the, the limits of, of materials and propulsion and aerodynamics and so forth. And lower right, that airplane is a jet powered uh, airplane. Uh, it was actually featured in, in uh, college game day and uh, they flew some of their cameras on it and also was invited to be on display at the uh, House Rayburn building in DC. So, so uh, Speedfest has been getting a lot of a lot of good uh, publicity. 
and then and then finally, you know, you can see some of the uh, high school class uh, airplanes there. Students excited about uh, launching their airplanes. And uh, Speed Fest is open at the India class, open to any high school. So I know that there's some educators here um, at the high school level. In fact, some of which have been in Speed Fest and will be opening that contest this year. So contact me if you're interested. And finally, we've been hosting this long enough now that we've seen uh, students go through the whole cycle. So students that started this in high school got interested in aviation and aerospace, um, went to school at, at OSU in aerospace engineering, then competed at the Alpha class, and now will and now work at uh, a major aerospace company in Oklahoma. So we're having good uh, good impact. Thank you for your time. Thank you What's so much. Day? What's the day for this? It it uh, last weekend in April is when the culminating event will be, okay. um, and it's a competition and, and expo. Students will start uh, building and or designing uh, this September, but but it it runs all year and culminates last weekend. And we have a website. Um, if you if you search Speed Fest in Oklahoma, if you Google it, you'll it should be the first uh, link there, and all the information is there if you like. Thank you, Dr. Reyna. The amount requested for Speed Fest was fifteen thousand dollars. Staff recommends uh, nine thousand dollars, and we'll stand for any questions. Next applicant is uh, another AOP, AOPA high school, and that's Okmulgee High School's Aviation Academy of Excellence. Uh, representing Okmulgee High School is Scott Bevan. Scott Bevan. Hi, Paula. How are you doing? Um, I, just wanted, I just wanted to thank y'all for having us. And here at Okmulgee, what we do is we, we're on the year two of the AOPA curriculum, and we do drones and uh, flight simulations as well. For the drones, as you can see, we um, are getting our kids ready for the FAA 107 uh, pilot or drone pilot certification, as well as we do uh, land analysis for uh, business owners and uh, property owners in the county. So we'll take our kids out and they will use the app called Joy and they'll autonomously fly the drone. Um, from those, we'll get pictures of uh, make a 2D model. And from that 2D model, we can also get things such as plant health and elevation as well. So our kids are getting a lot of experience with uh, people in the community, getting out in the community and offering that free service as well. Um, we're going into uh, flight simulation. Um, we also have a certified flight instructor in the community that will come in and offer his services. So if a student would like to uh, log hours, then he would be able to do that as well. So I uh, just appreciate the opportunity you're giving us. So thank you. Thank you, Scott. The amount requested for Okmulgee High School, $6,310.85. Staff recommendation is for $5,000. And we'll stand for any questions. The next program request is from Ponca City Regional Airport and its Northern Oklahoma Flight Academy. Representing Ponca City Regional is Don Newsom. Paula, I haven't seen Dawn on. Okay. Uh, Northern Oklahoma Flight Academy has been offered for several years. And um, I do know that it's basically a middle school, high school uh, camp program. I believe two weeks um, and they're asking for help for materials. Um, they offer flights. Uh, I did speak with them and they, as always, are very excited about having these uh, summer opportunities for students that allows them to visit Vance Air Force Base and some of the other uh, field trips that they've taken as part of the camp. The grant request for Ponca City Regional was $12,060. The staff, staff recommendation is for $8,500. The next grant request is from Putnam City High School's Air Force Junior ROTC and it's honor, Honors Aviation Program. Uh, re recommending, uh, representing Putnam City is Dane Christensen. I did not hear from Dane today. Um, 
I do know that this is a longstanding program. They, uh, in reading their application, they have had numerous uh, students apply for Ray scholars, flight scholarships. They have uh, a very broad program in bringing in, reaching cadets into their program that start at the beginning and follow all the way through. Um, they do Cyber Patriot. They had several that have received their private pilot certification. Again, this is a program that we have uh, provided grant funds for in the past. This year, the Putnam City High School Air Force ROTC is requesting 8,358.82 with a staff recommendation for $12,000. I'll stand for any questions. This is uh, Jim Putnam. I've just got a comment. Uh, I've watched this program. Uh, they're doing, he's doing a great job. He's teaching ground school to his uh, junior ROTC cadets. He's getting them scholarships through the Air Force to go get their private pilot's licenses. And then uh, he's pushing them towards race scholarships as well. So he's doing a fabulous job and the kids are really getting a lot out of it. He's also put several kids into the Air Force Academy. Right, exactly. And I know they've non won numerous awards as well. Any other comments or questions? The next program is for Rose State College's AXP Discovery Camp and rec representing uh, Rose State is Rick Woodard. Thought Rick was on earlier. Uh, again, this is a camp here. that has, are, are you on Rick? Oh, good, there you are, I thought I saw you, okay. Yes. Well, good morning, uh, commissioners, Paula, all others doing great things for Oklahoma's youth. Uh, on behalf of Rose State, we thank you for the opportunity to continue to excite our youth for future aerospace careers. So we really focus on that. And it's a huge mission of the president of our college, President Webb, um, um, that's spread throughout the campus. This is a part of a, this is a program that's a part of our kids college and teen scene program that serves about 2300 students each summer. And these are five of over uh, approximately 100 additional camps that embrace uh, STEM. This will be our 10th year of our OAC uh, uh, partnership. We had to cancel this last summer because of COVID. Uh, so, but uh, on, during this 10th year, we are adding a drone component and adding a, uh, a team member uh, to it, uh, Lisa Pitts. Um, Lisa, she is um, uh, she's a part of the Oklahoma Department of Education's uh, Teachers Advisory Council. Teacher Innovator Institute for the National Air and uh, Space Museum, Civil Air Patrol, and it's just very well qualified. And we are very lucky with our other two faculty members who uh, take on the rocket camps of Captain John Kilty, who is a retired Commodore of the Tinker Air Force uh, uh, Navy Air Wing, and Maggie Whitaker, uh, who is very heavy as, uh, into robotics and astronomy and um, um, into, into our program as far as our leaders. So um, with those leaders, and uh, um, we will basically, um, um, we will have five one week camps and um, serve um, at least 100 students. Uh, the rocket camps will continue, both the rocket and the drones are very hands-on um, opportunities to learn uh, the, the identified um, um, components that are on the slide, such as laws of motion and, and uh, build their own drone. Um, um, so um, we're, we're excited about continuing to grow the rocket uh, camps and adding our drone camps to, uh, to this program um, and our continued uh, partnership with the OAC. We appreciate you. Thank you so, so, so very much. Uh, Rose State College requested 26451 26, Staff recommendation is $13,500. I'm going to stand for any questions. The next grant is Southeastern Oklahoma State University's Take Flight Aviation Science Camp. And representing Oklahoma, uh, Southeastern Oklahoma State University is Elizabeth Resch. Good morning and thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, the Southeastern Take Flight Aviation Summer Camp is a camp we've done for the last several years. Personally, I've been involved the last three. Unfortunately, this 
past summer due to COVID and the other restrictions, we were unable to have this camp. Um, it is a camp that uh, a lot of our students, even as college students, look forward to helping with. And many of the local area high school students request information for frequently throughout the entire year. Typically, we have anywhere between about 20 and 25 students that'll come join us for a week. They come and they live in dorms on campus. They get to spend the entire week with uh, current aviation students in our professional pilot program. We cover all topics from careers in aviation to the fundamentals of flying and teach them how to plane cross countries and the other types of navigation with hopes that by the end of the week, we actually get weather providing, we have them in an airplane um, and going and getting some hands-on skills and some actual flight instruction with some of our staff flight instructors. Um, we're looking forward to hopefully having this camp this next year um, and looking forward to seeing some of our students continue to come through this camp and possibly even into our program here at Southeastern. Great, thank you so much, Elizabeth. For Southeastern Oklahoma State University, the amount requested is $12,000. Staff recommends $6,500 and Elizabeth will stand for any questions. Thank you. Next up is Starbase Oklahoma for its Soar to New Heights with STEM and Starbase OK program. Representing Starbase is Rita Miller. Good morning, everyone, um, and I'm happy to be here. I have Michelle Napier with our Starbase Foundation with me also. Uh, Starbase has been in Oklahoma since uh, 1983 or 1993. Um, we are an Oklahoma National Guard youth program through the Department of Defense, focusing on STEM education for fifth graders. And presently, we have four sites across the state with two classrooms uh, at the Tulsa Air National Guard Base, Tinker Air Force Base, Fort Sill Army Base, and then we have one class at Burns Flat, Oklahoma at the Western Technology Center. Uh, the fifth graders uh, come to Starbase and they receive 25 hours of uh, curriculum to include, but not limited to, physics, chemistry, data analysis, aerodynamics, computer-aided design, the engineering design process, and another five hours uh, that they um, get to tour the bases that the sites are located on, and Burns Flat actually goes out to um, Altus Air Force Base, and they have a tour uh, there that lasts all day, and they get to uh, tour the different STEM careers that are on the bases. Um, our Starbase 2.0 after-school program consists of 11 STEM clubs that we have uh, that meet 12 times uh, in the various schools across the state during the year, and provide STEM related projects for students in the sixth through eighth grades. And those projects can be anything that the school, that the point of contact that the school has gotten with us and really wanted to do. And most of the time, it's rockets. Imagine that. So, um, and that's, uh, that's it right now. We thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Rita. The requested amount for Starbase Oklahoma is $25,000. Staff recommendation is for $25,000 and we'll stand for any questions. Paula? Yes. Gina is on and she's been on this whole time. So we, if you would like to let her speak. Okay. Uh, Gina Hubbard with Oklahoma Career Tech Foundation and the OEIP program when I spoke to the program. Uh, Gina, I spoke for you earlier. So uh, feel free to talk to them a little bit about OEIP. Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you, Paula. You did a great job. I could hear and see everyone, so I'm not sure what happened on, on my end, but you know, you just have to love technology, and, and I do appreciate you letting me speak this morning. Uh, we, we love our OEIP event and so appreciate the Commission's continued support of that. Um, as with everyone else, uh, I don't know if you can share my PowerPoint again, but um, we, we transitioned very quickly in the spring to um, a virtual platform uh, rather than in-person events. And we uh, appreciate the opportunity to amend our grant so that we can still provide this important uh, professional development to teachers. So we had, um, we had 221 registrations, which we thought was awesome considering this, all the Zoom meetings the teachers were in in the spring. We didn't really know if they would even want to look at Zoom again, uh, but they did. And we had, um, we were able to give out uh, 17 uh, 
gift cards for them to provide uh, supplies to their classroom. We were also able to do connection to industry grants so that they can, can continue to partner with industry, even though in-person visits um, and classroom visits are not possible. Uh, we also were able to transition to uh, aerospace specific grants so that they can continue to uh, provide that information in their classrooms. We actually uh, partnered with Pitsco where they mailed out uh, Sky Eagle kits and we actually did a hands-on activity through the Zoom platform. So um, we stand ready in 2021 to implement um, the grant and we have five uh, host sites, but if need be, we will transition to online again to make sure that we continue to fulfill the mission of OEIP. So um, as you can see, 89% of our participants said they were very satisfied with the online uh, delivery. So we are planning um, actually eight, uh, or I say eight, we're doing monthly OEIP uh, deliveries through the virtual platform uh, as we move uh, towards spring. So thank you again for your support. It is critical to the mission of our, of our program and we are very appreciative. Thank you, Gina. And I'm sure if you commissioners have a question, she'll be happy to stand for those questions. Hearing none, the next grant program is Star Solutions for the Tinker Air and Space Show and representing Star is Chris Moeller. Can you hear me, Paula? Yes. Okay, good, thank you. Um, this will be the thank you very much to the commission for considering our grant proposal. This will be the seventh air show that Oklahoma Aeronautics Commission will have supported. The air show, as you know, is the largest air show in the state of Oklahoma held at Tinker Air Force Base. Last year, we had close to 200,000 people on site over the two day event. Um, the next air show will be coming. Unfortunately, it's not this summer. Uh, thanks to COVID, but it is next summer. Uh, Father's Day weekend, June 19th and 20th. We've had a record crowd. We keep growing from year to year to year. In the past, the Oklahoma Aeronautics Commission funding has supported the children's area, which has had uh, probably on an average about 15,000 children participate over two years. Also in 2019, we created the first STEM City hangar, and we actually uh, pulled a, a B-1 bomber that was under repair out of the hangar, cleaned it up, and filled it up with all kinds of STEM exhibits. And as I've been watching Paula, the 38 grant recipients, and I know that you will be involved with us. There's a lot of these grant recipients that we would like to invite to participate in this STEM City hangar and put them in front of a couple of hundred thousand people over two days and give you a tremendous amount of exposure. I think the unique thing that we provide back to the commission, and we've been working closely with Vic uh, for about 14 years and his team on this, is there's actually a sponsorship involved with this and the Oklahoma Aeronautics Commission uh, logo and brand is, is put in about close to about $300,000 worth of advertising throughout the state of Oklahoma, radio, TV, um, advertisements and things of that nature. In addition to that, they receive quite a bit of space in our VIP chalet where they're able to come in and network with a lot of the other of political people and other businesses and companies throughout the state of Oklahoma. I know the commissioner comes out, Dave Amos, who I grew up with, always comes out, Vic's always out there. And so that's always a good way for them to get a return on your investment, um, in addition to the great work that, that Tinker Air Force provides. Um, we have an exceptional air show coming up. Thunderbirds will be our headliner. We'll have the Wings of Blue. We also will have Vietnam reenactment. But I think that STEM City hangar is where we're going to put a lot of effort uh, in terms of uh, getting the Oklahoma Aeronautics Commission involved and helping us to plan that. And we're trying to work it out where we can provide a presenting level status to the Oklahoma Aeronautics Commission for the STEM City hangar. And that's going to be quite a, quite a deal for you. This will be the first year that we're going to have a mobile app um, uh, to help pro, uh, support the air show. And as a result of that, OAC will also receive quite a bit of recognition through that mobile app and it'll allow you to tell your story to the entire state of Oklahoma, I think, in conjunction with Tinker Air Force Base. So that provides a unique platform for the Oklahoma Aeronautics Commission. Uh, the the uh, support goes to the 72nd Fourth Support, and that's where the money typically goes to support them in addition to what they do to help support that VIP chalet. So we appreciate your consideration for our funding. Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much. 
the requested amount for STAR Solutions is 28,000. Staff recommends 28,000. Stand for any questions. Hearing none, Thank next you. is the Tulsa Air and Space Museum. The museum director was ill today. Mr. London, if you would like to represent Tulsa Air and Space about your flight simulation lab. Thank you, Commission. And as you can see behind me, I am sitting right now in our flight lab. Our resources would be dedicated to upgrading this flight lab. What we would like to do is add a series of VR headsets, as well as upgrade uh, for more sophisticated, realistic controls for this flight lab. We average about 30,000 students a year here. Of course, with COVID going on right now, that has changed a little bit. But with a lot of our younger learners, we need an element of interactivity to really begin to connect with them at this point. Um, so this flight lab would allow us to add a significant more uh, detailed element of interactivity throughout the lab. We have different uh, areas of curriculum set up, including uh, flight missions, uh, navigation setups connected with some of our sister exhibits in the museum that really allows a small group of folks to kind of work together as a team and operate their own flight mission. Um, it will be open to the public and we do expect primarily young learners up to high school to use this, but we uh, expect also adult enthusiasts and hobbyists as well. Your, like I said, your resources would go to upgrading the tech in there. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. London. Tulsa Air and Space Museum is requesting 28,468. Staff recommends 10,000. We'll stand for any questions. Next is Tulsa Community Work Advance for their program designed to bridge skill gaps. Rep representing Tulsa Community Work Advance is Chad McDermott. Hi everybody, I'm actually logged in as Lindsay Cunningham, so apologies for any confusion on the name there. Uh, she had to step up for another meeting, but I will uh, represent our organization. Thanks for having us. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to talk to y'all. Uh, as you know, Tulsa Community Work Advance, it, it, we're a proven sector-based program that meets the needs of our local aerospace and manufacturing businesses here in the Tulsa area. Our goal really is to provide skilled and certified workers to fill the skills gap in the advanced manufacturing and aerospace industries while providing the underserved Tulsans with post-secondary credentials and employment so they can break the cycle of intergenerational poverty. We do this by working with employers to create customized curriculum to provide a short term and meaningful credential so they can quickly get the skilled workers they need so that they can continue to thrive and grow. In fact, in the past two grant cycles, we have partnered with over 20 aerospace companies that include Nordam, Spirit, Primus, MST, Acuris, and many others. So we're happy to uh, be considered again. So I appreciate the time. Thank you so very much, Chad. The requested amount for Tulsa community is $30,812. The staff recommendation is for $15,000. We'll stand for any questions. And finally, last but not least, the University of Oklahoma Sooner Flight Academy for its summer camp program representing Sooner Flight is April Milloway. Hello everyone, Paula, can you hear me? Yes. Um, thank you so much from the University of Oklahoma and Sooner Flight Academy for the long partnership we've had with the Oklahoma Aeronautics Commission. Um, Sooner Flight Academy has been around for over 30 years. To give you a perspective of the impact of the support we receive, we have about 2,000 students participate each year in year-round programming, so field trips, workshops, uh, spring break workshops, teacher training, and as many of you know, our Sooner Flight Academy summer camp. Um, we were very excited this past summer to be able to offer a virtual summer camp, which was groundbreaking for the University of Oklahoma and for several people across the nation. Uh, typically at our on-site camp, we have about 450 campers. This summer we had over 150 campers participate virtually. Um, so that really breaks down into age groups. We serve ages six through 18 over several groups and focus on content such as flight principles, physics, mathematics, weather, 
Uh, also unmanned aircraft systems, which is new. We uh, entered into a partnership with STEM Pilot and the Drone Safe program. And so this summer we were able to mail all of our activity supplies to our campers and they were able to do demos via Zoom and through our Canvas online learning system. Our Eagles, which were 14 to 18, loved the partnership with STEM Pilot and the Drone Safe program. It was wonderful for them. We also appreciated uh, virtual panels and field trips with the FAA at the Mike Monroney Center, uh, with the Crash Lab, with CAMI, uh, with the Will Rogers Airport, all kinds of things. Um, what I'm really glad to tell you is that the impact that it can make when you do, uh, whether you want to or not, when you go online, it can be amazing. So we have been able to reach a lot of children who have special needs, autism and Asperger's. Specifically, we had a student writer whose siblings had gone to Sooner Flight Academy for years, uh, but he was unable to do so because he couldn't get past uh, the desk because of social anxiety. And so it was amazing to let Ryder finally participate and join his siblings to be Sooner Flight Academy alumni. Um, diversity has really gone up. We've been able to partner with the Choctaw Nation, the Creek Nation, LoveWorks in town, some charter schools. We've had an increase in our um, partnership and diversity with our tribal nations. So over 40% of that, uh, our population represent tribal partners as well as our diversity is about 60%. Um, so we're so thankful again for Sooner Flight Academy. And I think just to end, we all would like to say, um, as JFK did, you know, we put a man on the moon in under a decade. I think for all of us as educators, by 2030, what we will be able to do with our youth is kind of unimaginable. So the ability to take them from a pilot, an air traffic controller, a maintenance worker, a safety inspector to being able to operate unmanned systems, multiple UAS, uh, space flight, uh, whatever we end up doing with Mars, there's so much potential that we have. And on behalf of Sooner Flight Academy, thank you that you've been able to touch the lives of 180 youth in an on-site program with scholarships and over 100 full scholarships when many parents lost their jobs and people really didn't know how to move on in a pandemic. But because of the Aeronautics Commission, we all brought inspiration to our youth and we really uh, kept the aerospace community and the future of the aerospace community strong. So thank you so much, Paula, and everyone at the Aeronautics Commission. Thank you, April. What a great way to end. The amount requested for Sooner Flight Academy, 49,000. Staff recommendation is for 46,000. Uh, that will end uh, the presentation of our grants, and I hope you are as excited as I am about it. I hope to try to visit as many of these programs as I can uh, I, I think they're remarkable educators and I'm excited about what these grant funds can do for our state. Mr. Chairman, uh, if I may, before we take a motion on this item and receive a second and any discussion, I'd like to do, a, given the length of time that's transpired, I'd like to do a quick roll call of the commission. Okay. Andrea, call the roll, please. All right. Thank you. First Congressional District Commissioner Kevin Potter. Here. Second Congressional District Commissioner David Conway. Here. Fourth Congressional District Commissioner Lindy Ritz. Here. Fifth Congressional District Commissioner Dave Amos. Here. At large Commissioner Jim Putnam. Here. At large Commissioner Jerry Hunter. Here. Thank you. We have a quorum. Okay, Mr. Chairman, we may proceed with action on this item. Okay. Uh, any questions at all, commissioners? Okay. Uh, I need a motion to approve all of this, but let me say first, uh, we've got some wonderful, wonderful grant requests here. Lots of wonderful programs. Thank you very much for submitting your proposals to everyone. And uh, it's going to be a pleasure to fund all of these programs. Thank you. I so move, this is Jim Putnam, I move that we approve all of those uh, proposal requests. I do have a question before we, before we do that, Jim. I understand the Museum of Women Pilots made a submission for a, or made a grant request this year and they don't even appear in this list. Is any idea why? Yes, uh, I spoke, oh, go ahead. 
Go ahead, Paula. You can address this. Well, I did speak with uh, the folks at the from the museum about the grant request. Uh, went over the specific rules of the grant application and specifically how the request needed to be tied to curriculum and what the students would be learning uh, as far as whether they're Oklahoma State academic standards or objectives, specifically what they would be learning rather than sometimes in some cases the request for overhead uh, to keep a building open. We were trying to lean completely to what the rules state, which is that the, the programs should be aviation uh, and aeronautics geared to curriculum and learning. And I told- uh, Their entire folks, program is aviation. Yes, it is. Their program is aviation education. Yes, it is, and and no one no one disputes the fact that the museum, of course, is about aviation. The idea by the about the grants would be that within that museum, then a learning experience tied to specific objectives, whether it's four forces of flight or Shannon Lucid and the history of Oklahoma uh, aviators, where there's specific doesn't, learning goals involved. Doesn't the Museum of Women Pilots have an objective? And the entire museum is a support of that learning objective. I mean, is that not true? That's the whole sole function of that entire museum is aviation. And there's a curriculum of exhibits that one goes through to complete that museum. Uh, yes, yeah, so you're correct. And specifically, you hit on it right there. As you go through the museum, what the funding would be best served would be for the purchase of specific specific items as to be used as vehicles for learning. Uh, I realize the overall purpose of the museum, but the grant itself, the things that they're going to purchase need to be materials that would be aimed directly towards students, uh, a special exhibit of some type, a lab of some type, uh, that it's hands-on and not just to keep, uh, normally to keep a building open, but rather to be able for uh, us to see what skills those students are learning there. Director, do you have any other? Yeah, Commissioner uh, Hunter, if, if I might, uh, certainly what you're saying about its overall objective is, is absolutely correct. We have never seen an application as we, like we received from the organization. It specifically requested support for overhead items. Never that in our time of doing aviation education, I can say that's that's somewhat unprecedented. Uh, if they would, we're going to. I had a chance to look at that application, and I believe it was support for the hiring of additional personnel, not existing overhead, but to hire additional personnel for expansion. I, I had the opportunity to look at it after it. it or both before and after. In any event, we can discuss this offline. I just wanted to ask I know, Frank. Yeah, and, and we, we have said to them that we wanna work with them so that they can submit an application that's more in keeping with our rules because it is a good program. I know you're on the board and I certainly understand your passion for this. Right, I would have recused myself from the vote on that one I know but you would have. I think they absolutely warrant consideration. It's a program that applies more to aviation than half the things that we've awarded here. And it is They're something not aviation specific. Something we're going to work with them so that their application complies with and is consistent with our rules so that we can support them. All right, sir. Thank you. Let's let's move on to the vote. So we've got a motion and a second. Um, Andrea, call the roll, please. Chairman, I think we only have a motion. It's, I'll second it. Okay, all right. Uh, Commissioner Potter. Aye. Commissioner Conway. Aye. Commissioner Ritz. Aye. Chairman Amos. A pleasure to vote yes for this. Commissioner Putnam. Aye. Commissioner Hunter. Absolutely. Motion carried. Okay, thank you, thank you very much, fellow commissioners. Uh, 
Item eight, concluding remarks by the our esteemed director. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, a couple of notes for the public uh, as well as the commission. Uh, at the outset, I noted that six commissioners were participating by way of video conference consistent with the recent amendments to the Open Meeting Act. Uh, we did have some technical difficulties, so actually five participated by video conference. Commissioner Conway, representing the second district, participated by teleconference as allowed by the Open Meeting Act. Something you've probably noted, uh, this will add up to usually in our budget, uh, which we are very proud of as a commission, we expend more than any other state on aerospace and aviation education. Um, love it if we could find additional revenue streams, we could even increase this, but we think this is very, very respectable at the amount we are at. This year we were able to put more into it because of recap funds or cap, if you will, from programs that were unable to actually be implemented uh, in last fiscal year. I, I, in the future, uh, unless we get those additional revenue streams, it'll, it'll go back to the 300,000 mark. Uh, one other, one of the things we had to do, COVID has brought about so many changes in the world. We basically had to revise certain grant agreements in so far as how, how the program actually was implemented and carried out. Uh, what I'm probably going to bring bringing to you next is uh, a request for you to delegate authority to the director so that I may be able to execute those revised agreements without having to bring them back to the commission. So long as we still get, we're the ultimate, deter we determine whether is this still going to have value or is it so mitigated or diminished that it really doesn't have value and has lost its import as originally presented in the grant application. Uh, we will be extremely careful with respect to that, but I will most likely be bringing that to you at the next commission meetings, asking for that delegation. Is that all, sir? Nothing further, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you, Vic. Um, item number nine, our next meeting is 14 October. Oh, we need and I uh, appreciate everybody getting online today and uh, participating in our meeting. Thank you very much. And uh, does anybody have any new business that has not been mentioned before? Okay, thank you very much. If I had my gavel, I'd bang it. We are adjourned. No, Mr. Chairman, if I could, please. <laughs> hang on, hang on just a moment there. Okay. Uh, I need to make an announcement and I'm waiting. I assume uh, Sandra is on. I have not received a text, but uh, has the audio connection, maybe I can ask our- uh, Director, I can confirm to you that the audio connection has been maintained. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, ODOT, our friends at ODOT, who we would not be able to do this in the manner that we have and without their assistance and help. Uh, the audio connection has been maintained as Sandra has reported and the time is now 12, 12 p.m. and we are ready to conclude this meeting by video conference and teleconference, Mr. Chairman. Okay, we are concluded and now we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.